like for y'all to remember, keep praying for LB. He, he had a good report, but there's no more clots on his brain. Amen. Keep praying for us for that. But still going through it. Kidneys and liver, pray for that. Okay. Uh, Glenn. Jimmy. Sorry. All right, Jimmy uh, Kroll. We've been asked to remember him in prayer. Uh, got cancer. And, uh, and his wife, the uh, same day he, they was operating on him, she got a phone call that she's got lymphoma. Uh, so remember that family if you would, please. Uh, any, anybody else? Sam Gray, he uh, was a custodian in my school. Of course, he had cancer. Okay. Anybody else? I'm glad when we get to heaven, we won't hear the cancer no more. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning, let's let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. Y'all stand to your feet, hug somebody's neck, tell them you're glad they're here.
Bye. Uh -huh.
We are definitely blessed. Amen. 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 You know, Good things always come out of bad things. Amen. God's grace there. Amen. I want to thank all these girls that come back here, the town back here. You know, she had her stroke the other day, and that girl God got y'all here for a reason. I can only imagine. somebody our Sunday school lesson was on Barnabas and I want to encourage you today if there's something burdening you down or something bothering you I, I encourage you to just turn it over to the Lord and let him Amen. have it. Uh, we, we've got a greater hope. Uh, we've got something good to look forward to. Just, just trust in the Lord today. Uh, Y'all pray for me as I try to sing this song. It's been a while since I sang. A little bit nervous up here to be honest with you. Y'all just pray for me. Paul met the Lord on Damascus Road. He never was a 
same again. Peter met the Lord, he left his boat and started fishing for men. Now, I may not be Peter Paul, but one thing I can truly say, when I met the Lord, I made him a choice. He definitely made a change. He made a change.
us, if you would, to Somebody else. First Chronicles, chapter number four, verse number ten. While you're turning there, I'm going to read to you two verses from James, chapter one. James, chapter one, verses fourteen and fifteen reads like this. It says, "But every man is tempted." When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God, for another opportunity, uh, God, to get to stand and preach your word. Lord, we ask you this morning as, as we take this pulpit, God, get us out of your way. Make us nothing more than your mouthpiece in this place. And, and Father God, we ask you that your, your word would speak to the heart of your people, Lord. We'll give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for us. In your holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, 1 Chronicles in chapter number 4 and verse number 10, we're going to read one verse here and we're going to preach uh, for two and a half hours from this one verse. Uh, Y'all was paying attention. Amen. <laughs> uh, no, this is uh, uh, going to be as long as the Lord will have it to be. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. The Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And I'm going to stop, and we're going to uh, preach for just a few minutes about what Jabez understood. What Jabez understood. We read it over in, in uh, the book of James about how that, that uh, lust conceiveth sin and, and, and when sin's finished, it brings forth death. Uh, Jabez understood some things in this, in this passage of Scripture. Uh, now, y'all, you can go and you can take uh, the entire book of First Chronicles, and you can read through all the names and all the stuff and, uh, that's in there, and you can say, "Man, I, I just really didn't get a whole lot." But this one verse out of First Chronicles four, I believe, uh, speak volumes about what uh, Jabez understood. But not only what Jabez understood, but what we need to understand in our lives today. If we understand uh, understand the things that Jabez understood, I believe. Uh, that we'll be much better off, uh, much more profitable for the kingdom of God uh, than we've ever been before. So we're going to preach for just a little while on what Jabez understood. The Bible says Jabez called on the God of Israel. Jabez understood who to call on, okay? 
He understood who to call on. Uh, in this day and time in which we live, uh, we, we still have problems just like they had back in the Old Testament times, like they had uh, in, in the part of the early church. We've still got the same uh, kind of problems today that we had then because uh, we're still human beings. We're still living uh, in a fallen earth and we're still living uh, under the deception of Satan uh, that takes place in our world on a daily basis. And uh, may I submit to you this morning, uh, we need to understand who it is that we need to call on. Uh, you can call Dr. Phil or you can call Oprah, but they ain't going to help you. Uh, but if you call on the Lord God of Israel, uh, may I tell you there's help and there's hope for your situation and, and for the, the life that you're living today. Uh, that If you don't understand who to call on, uh, you might as well just hang it up right there uh, because you're going to turn to everything else in this world. And let me tell you, the only hope is found in calling on the right one. Jabez has understood who to call on. In this day and time, let me tell you something. If you can't say that it's well with your soul, it's because you ain't called on the right one. Amen. 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 If you can't find peace in, in, in among your life, it's because you ain't called on the right one. You need to understand this morning who it is you need to call on. See, I'm going to tell you something. You say, Brother John, if, if I get into trouble or, or I get into uh, uh, problems in my life or I start having uh, 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 suicidal thoughts or whatever the case may be, I'm going to call you. I hope you do. But let me tell you something. I'm going to send you to the one that you can call on. Amen, because I'm going to tell you something. John Mays ain't always going to be there. Uh, ain't, ain't always going to be available. Uh, uh, here in the last few weeks, I don't know uh, what has happened to my phone. I don't know if I can't feel anymore or I can't hear anymore. Uh, but I got my phone on ring and on vibrate. I don't write at this moment because I was afraid somebody would call uh, while I was up here preaching. But anyway, I'll have my phone on ring and on vibrate and I'll still miss them. Come on, can I get it? Y'all with me? I don't know what that's all about. It can be right there in my pocket and, and, and somebody will call and, and two hours later I'll get to, I'll, I'll look and I'll say, well, I'll say, Miss Cole, two hours ago and I'll think, my goodness, how'd that happen? They think, they think I'm avoiding them, but I'm not avoiding. Come on. I'm not always going to be available. But let me tell you something you understand who to call on, He's always available. Amen. He's Amen. always available. He will, he will have you, uh, He'll give you His ear in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning. He'll Amen. give you His ear in the afternoon when you're uh, driving home from work and you're wore out and you're tired. He'll give you His ear in the morning time uh, when you first wake up if you'll just call on Him. Let me tell you something, church. What we need to understand is who to call on. Uh, we call on our brothers and our sisters and y'all, we need to rely on each other. Uh, but Y'all, well, our brothers and sisters will let us down sometimes. They may not mean to, they may not want to, uh, but let me tell you something, every one of us is human beings and every, other, every one of us will let the other person down, uh, but let me tell you, there's one that won't let you down. Uh, there's one that you can call on at the midnight hour. There's one that you need to understand who to call on like Jabez did. And the Bible says Jabez called on uh, the Lord God of Israel. He called on the only one that could help. He understood who to call on. And the, the next part of that verse it says, He's called on the Lord uh, God of, uh, on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. See, Jabez understood who to call on, and Jabez understood who could bless. Amen. You get what I'm saying to you this morning? You say, I, 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 in this world in which we live, and especially in the church culture in which we live today, folks are looking to the pastor to be the blessing. They're looking to the deacons to be the blessing. They're looking to the uh, Sunday school teachers to be the blessing. And let me tell you something, we can all be a blessing to somebody else, uh, but if you want to look to the one that holds the blessings in his hand, the one that's got the power to bless, you're going to call on God. Amen. Because I got no power to bless you. I wished I could. Come on. There's some of you I'd like to bless right upside the head sometimes. 
Y'all still listening? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I don't have the power to bless. But my God does. Amen. Jabez understood that. He said that thou wouldest bless me indeed. How long has it been, church, since we want a blessing indeed? I'm going to stop and camp out here for just a minute since nobody said amen. How long has it been since we wanted a, a blessing indeed? And we asked the one that could do it. And we, asked the, uh, we understood who to ask. And we understood that He was the one that could bless us. How long has it been since we wanted a blessing like that? Church, listen to me this morning. I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I, and, and, and I want you to get what I'm about to say to you this morning. I'm sick and tired of having just normal, everyday, mundane church services. I'm tired of it. I, I'm tired of, of, of having those services where we come in and, and, and we sing a few songs and we uh, listen at the preacher for a little while. We shake everybody's hand and we walk out the door and nothing don't happen at the altar. I'm tired of that. I, I, I'm tired of those times when uh, we come together and, and we don't see uh, anything happen uh, for the kingdom of God. and We don't uh, uh, hear no shouting going on and we don't hear no praising going on. We don't see no hands uh, raised up in and you say, Brother John, it's not a Sunday goes by uh, that somebody's hand don't raise up. I know that, church, but listen to me. I don't want there to be a Sunday go by that everybody don't raise their hands up. I don't want there to be a Sunday go by that we don't see somebody saved in the altar. I don't want to see a Sunday go by that we don't see uh, uh, the church folk move up closer to the Lord. I'm sick of the mundane. I'm sick of the, the average Sunday go by. Uh, but y'all, let me tell you something. How long has it been since we've asked for a blessing that we ain't got room enough to receive? Amen. I can remember the, the, the old timers telling about church services where they used to uh, uh, they wouldn't be any room in the house they wouldn't be any room in the church house and nowadays if you ain't got a seat on each side of you uh, and, and plenty of room to spread out and make yourself comfortable uh, you say I'm not going back to the church house back in the old days they used to pack in on top of each other and then when they run out of room they'd raise the windows they'd stack up milk crates uh, so that way the folks could stand on the milk crates outside and hear the word of God preached inside I'm longing for those days. I'm longing for the days a, a friend of mine told me about a day uh, when the power of God just fell down on his church. He said it just rolled down. He said there was folks uh, 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 yelling and a screaming and a shouting and a praising. He said there was folks walking on the backs of benches. Uh, there was folks that was uh, just down in the altar just pouring their heart out to God. Uh, there was tears on everybody's face in the house. And he said I had a friend of mine that morning uh, that come to church he was a lost man and he said I had invited him to church he said before the end of the service said he was down in the aisle he was crawling to the altar because he knew something was going on up there that he needed y'all this morning I want to ask you how long has it been since you've asked for a blessing like that I want to see a time when a lost person crawls down the aisle amen Y'all going to hear some shouting and some screaming going on. It'll be me, amen. I may leave slap out of this place. Come on, somebody. If somebody come crawling down the aisle, they said, just broken. Old buddy was telling me, said the next morning they got to work, and that friend of his at work with him, he said, tell, tell them what happened yesterday. He said, I don't know exactly what it was. He said, but something happened. And he said, next thing I knew, I was on my knees crawling to an altar and I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. 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 He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. See, the problem, church, is, is that we don't want to be blessed indeed. We just want enough Jesus to say, hey, we got salvation. We just want enough Jesus to say, make us feel good on Sunday morning. I want enough Jesus to convict the hearts of the lost. Amen. Hey man, I want, I, when I walk into a room and a lost person's there, I want them to say, I want what he's got. Amen. I want what he's got. I, I want that for me. I want it for my life. Because he's got something I ain't got. 
Jabez understood who to call on. Jabez understood who could bless. In the next part of that verse, he says, and enlarge my coast. Jabez understood who could enlarge his coast, who could give him a larger place to dwell. Uh, and then he goes on there uh, in, in, in that last part of that verse, and he says that thine hand might be with me. That thine hand might be with me. See, Jabez understood who to call on, who could bless, who could enlarge. And Jabez understand, understood whose presence was needed. Amen. He said that your hand might be on me. That your hand might be on me. Y'all, let me tell you something this morning. As, as we get down to the bare bones of the matter, how much presence of God have you got in your life? Because I'm going to submit to you and tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt this morning, the amount of, of the presence of God you got in the life in your life is the amount you want. Amen. I got one amen in the house. Come on, church, listen. The amount of God of presence of God that you have in the, in your life is the amount you want. It's the amount you want. You say, Brother John, I, I, don't, I don't buy that. I don't get into that. I, let me tell you something. He, he says, seek me early and you'll find me. Amen. Amen. He, he says, you get in, in my word and I'll speak to you. I'll talk to you. He, he, he tells us these things throughout Scripture. And yet we say, well, i, I, I got to wait on Sunday and wait and let the, the preacher uh, tell me what it is that I, I need for my life. No. No. Y'all wouldn't, it, you know why we don't get blessed indeed? It's because we don't come uh, ready to receive a blessing indeed. Amen. 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 He could bless us all week long and we could walk in here next Sunday morning and have the presence of God on us like we've never had before and y'all the Spirit of God would fall like it ain't never fell before. Yes. Amen. Amen. He said that your hand would be on me. See, Jabez understood who to call on. He understood who could bless. He understood who could enlarge. And he understood whose presence he needed. If the church of today would understand those four things, there'd be no holding us back. No stomping us out. If we understood those four things. But there's something else that Jabez understood. And this is, what, this is the meat of our message this morning. Jabez understood this. He said that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That thou would keep me from evil. Jabez understood that sin not only could but it would separate him from the one whose presence had the power to enlarge and the potential to bless. He, did, he understood that it not only could separate him, but that it definitely would separate him. Amen. He said, God, I want you to keep your hand on me and keep me from evil. Keep me out of the sinful situation. Because lust starts, it conceives it. When sin's born, sin don't get done until it kills you. Jabez understood that. Listen to me, church. If the church of the living God would understand how much sin has crept into our churches, how much it has crept in uh, to the lives of the people that are sitting in our, in our pews every Sunday, if we'd understand that, we'd understand why we don't have the presence like we used to have. We'll understand why we don't have the blessings like we used to have. We'll understand those things. Uh, but until we begin to get, uh, get a hold of this, of what Jabez understood, that sin would... Uh, would separate him from the ones whose presence had the power to enlarge and the potential to bless. If we understood those things like Jabez did, the, the church would be a different place. Amen. Say, Brother John, you, you own sin this morning. Yes, I am. 
I think it's about time some more preachers got up and preached about sin for a little while. Here's the problem with sin today. Is that we want to justify it. And we want to say how innocent it really is. When God says it's not. I'm tired. I'm going to sit down a while. I'm kidding. I want, to sh- I want to show you something real quickly this morning. I'm going to make a commandment. I'm not, I'm not being God, but I, I'm going to make a commandment for just a second and give you all an example. Do not sit in this chair. That's your commandment. Do not sit in this chair. Okay. If you sit in this chair, you're going to die. Uh Uh-oh. Everybody's thinking, looking at me like, you're threatening me. I'll show you. You know why you're doing that? Because that's human nature. In the beginning, with Adam and with Eve, they had one rule. Don't eat of that tree. You know what you've got this morning, church, for the next few minutes? You've got one rule. Don't sit in that chair. You say, well, I'm not really tempted by sitting in that chair because I've got a pretty good, comfortable chair right now that I'm sitting in. Adam and Eve had plenty to eat. Adam and Eve had plenty to eat in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that that God told them, said every tree in the midst of the garden is for your benefit and for you to eat from except that tree. Don't, don't, Don't eat of that tree. Adam and Eve had plenty to eat and, and, and but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Satan comes on the scene and Satan says, he really say don't eat of that tree. And right now, you every one of you sitting there thinking, y'all looking at this chair, y'all thinking, well, that chair looks pretty good. Why can't I sit in that chair? Because John said, if I sat in that chair, I was going to die. I'll show him. I go sit in that chair and not die. See, Eve began to look at that tree, and the Bible says that she saw that it was had fruit on it that looked good for meat. In other words, it had something on it that she... Well, that wouldn't hurt me. And, and, but God said, if you eat of that tree, it's going to kill you. You're going to die. Don't miss this and what I'm about to tell you is the importance that the eyes play in sin. Because here's what sin does, church, and I want you to listen to me really close. It first catches your attention. It first catches your attention. Jabez understood this. He said, God, keep your hand on me and keep me from evil. Because the first thing that sin does is it catches your attention. Y'all see that chair? It looks comfortable, don't it? It looks like, it looks like a, a, a good chair that would be comfortable. And I could sit there. It catches your attention. See, that's what sin does. First of all, it catches your attention. And then you begin to justify. And you begin to say, well, that was, chair was made to sit in. Well, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God made that too, but He said don't eat of it. But, but it looked like fruit, that, like every other fruit on every other tree. But God said don't eat of it. But those eyes in, in, in Genesis, when, when the Bible says she 
beheld the tree. She saw the tree. She saw that the fruit on the tree was good. And, and she said, I'm going to examine that a little closer. It first caught her attention. Sin today will always catch your attention. Whether it be something on TV that you shouldn't ought to watch. If y'all don't say amen, we're going to be here all day. Whether it be something on TV that you ought not watch, it catches your attention. Or whether it be something that you ought not say, it catches your attention. It, 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 uh, if it's something on the radio that you shouldn't ought to be listening to, it catches your attention. And, and something happened there in, in, with, with Eve. The Bible said that she went and she beheld the fruit. It, it, it talks out like she walked up to the tree. And it had done caught her attention. But she began to look at it. And uh, then she began to justify. So this looks good to me. It, sin does this. It'll catch your attention. And then it'll start to control your affection. You say, Brother John, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not in love with no sin this morning. Are you not? I, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to uh, uh, single anybody out or talk to you uh, uh, about any certain circumstance or situation or whatever. But I can just tell you about some old ladies that I used to know years ago that they wouldn't miss their stories. You say, stories, Brother John? Some of y'all young kids ain't got a clue what I'm about to talk about, but there was something called soap operas. Are they? Y'all say, hey, man, I don't know. But there was some older folk that would not miss their stories. Y'all, I promise you, I was sitting in church one Sunday. Y'all ain't going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you this, and this is the truth if I've ever spoken it. I was sitting in church one Sunday with my wife and, and this lady, she stands up during prayer request and she starts talking about this, this woman that has been uh, 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 married to this man but she'd been cheating on him. Now they're getting back together. And, 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 but now he's got put in a hospital. He's got some kind of infection and, 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 and uh, they're trying to work things out. Their kids are in disarray. And y'all just pray for that family, she said. And I said, oh my gosh. And Karen said, it's okay. It's just general hospital. <laughs> Church, listen to what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> First, sin will, will catch your attention. And then it will begin to uh, control your affection. Because you get more into the things of this world than you are into the things of Christ. Let me tell you something. I don't care how innocent you may say it is. If you're caught hold of something more than you're caught hold of Christ, then it has become a sin. It has become a sin. It has become an idol. It has become something that's more important to you uh, than serving God Himself. All Eve had to do is not eat of one tree. All you've got to do is not sit in one chair. But right now, this morning, as you're sitting here, it's caught your attention. You see it sitting there, and it's beginning to control your affection. You're saying, man, I'd like to sit in that chair. You know why you'd like to sit in that chair? Just because John said don't sit in that chair. Same way with God. When, when God tells you don't do something and, and you say, well, I'm going to show Him. I'm going to do it because it's innocent. Going to a football game is innocent. But let me tell you something. Going to a football game before reading your Scripture is a sin. Amen. Going, uh, uh, going uh, and, and placing your work life above your Christian life is a sin. Placing your wife or your, your kids above Christ is a sin. He says if, you, if a man will not forsake his mother and his father and his wife and his kids, he's not worthy to be called my disciple. 
You say, Brother John, that's, that's just kind of crazy. Let me tell you something. Our God made the rules, I didn't. And when He says if He hate not His father and His mother, He's not talking about literal hatred. He's saying that you ought to love Christ so much that in comparison to how you love your wife and kids, it ought to look like hate. Because you're just grabbing hold of Jesus. And you're hanging on to Him. But see, the, the, the first thing sin does is it catches your attention. Then it begins to control your affection. That becomes more important than anything else. Y'all, I, I, I I'm not preaching against having pets. I'm not. I, I, I love pets. As long as they're at your house and not at mine. Come on. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not preaching against having pets. I'm, I'm really not. But uh, you know how folks will... It, it, I tell, I'll tell you what, I'm going to preach on some, one thing for just a second. This is a sidebar. This is not part of my message, but I'm going I'm to give you this. If you treat your dog like a kid, quit. Your dog is not no kid, okay? Amen. All right? I want you to understand that. Because there's a whole lot of folks that treat their dog better than children are treated. And there's children uh, that are up for adoption right now in Fort Payne, Alabama. There's children all over the state of Alabama that needs a loving home. If you can love your dog like you can a kid, then you get you a kid and really love a kid. Amen. Okay? Now, I'll get off that bar for just a minute. But I read this thing, this article on a, 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 about a lady that literally had a, a pet. And, and y'all, you're going you're gonna to think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you exactly what I read. She had bought a pet python. And I, if anybody in the house likes snakes, yonder's the door, okay? <laughs> Because I don't like snakes, all right? <laughs> no, I, but anyway, there's this lady, she bought a pet python, and, 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 and she, uh, she bought it as a baby, and she began to raise that python, and, and she loved that python. It, it had caught her attention, the beauty of that snake, and I don't think they're beautiful, but I was read, I'm reading now, and... and, and uh, uh, it had caught her attention, the beauty of the snake, and, and, and she had took it home, and it began to control her affections. And, and, and she, she poured her life into that snake, just like folks do uh, with their pets. They, 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 they treat their pets just like they're part of the family, and, uh, and, and that's the way she had done with this python. Uh, there's a lot of folks that have dogs that, uh, that climb up in the bed and go to sleep with them at night, and there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, there's a lot of folks that have cats, that crawl, uh, that crawl up in the bed and go to sleep with them at night. And uh, this lady had allowed her pet python from the time it was a baby to sleep with her. I heard stupid somewhere right there. Hey, come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. I'll agree. But that's what she had done. She had taken that baby pet python. It had caught her attention. It had begun to control her affection. And she treated it just like it was a baby. And, and, and she had this thing sleeping with her every night for 14 years. This thing had grown huge. By this time, it was bigger than she was, and she couldn't hold it anymore. She couldn't pet it anymore. But this thing was, had gotten huge and she, she allowed that thing to sleep with her continually every night. And that thing would stretch out across her body and she'd lay there and sleep. One day the, the python began to act unusual. It quit eating. And she was worried about this thing. She's had this thing for 14 years. She, she began to worry and, and, and fret over, over her python not eating. And so she carried it to the vet after two or three days of not eating. Carries it to the vet and, and, and says, Please tell me what's wrong with my baby. And the doctor examines it. The, the veterinarian, he examines the python can find nothing 
physically roam with a python. So he began to inquire of the lady, and she began to tell him, said, well, he sleeps with me every night, and, and that, that, uh, that behavior is normal. He always has. But this is not normal. He's not eating. The doctor told the lady, said, ma'am, you need to quit sleeping with this python. Because what this python is doing is, is making its belly able to receive a large meal. It's preparing itself to eat you. Ain't that just like sin? Ain't that just like sin? Y'all, it, it, it is conceived with lust and, and then it brings forth, it's conceived with the eyes and, and then it brings forth sin and sin don't quit till it brings forth death. It will catch your attention, it will control your affection and then it will consume you all together. You say, Brother John, I wouldn't dare ever let anything consume me all together. Church, listen to what I'm about to tell you. That's what sin does. That's what sin does. Is it pulls you away from where you're supposed to be. And, and it catches your attention. Then it begins to control your affection. And the next thing you know, you're consumed altogether. You say, but I've got better sense than to do what that lady did. Have we about sin? Amen. You say, Brother John, I'm, I'm just messing around. I'm just, I, and I don't know what you're saying. I don't, I, I, I'm not trying to get into that. I, I'm just occasionally drinking a little bit. You know what? That sin will consume you. It will consume you. Well, well, well Brother John, I, I, I'm, I'm young. And, 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 and i got to sow my wild oats. Listen to me, kids. Don't do the things I did. Please. For the love of God. Me and Brad, are, we're lucky to be alive. Don't do the things that we've done. Ain't it right, Wade? Please don't do the things we've done because it, it might catch your attention for a little while. You might think, man, I want to be cool. The next thing you know is controlling your affection. It, it's, it's where you're going on, on Thursday nights. It's where you're going on Friday nights. It's what you're doing on Saturday nights. It's why you can't go to church on Sunday. Next thing you know, you're consumed. Amen. Had an old guy tell me one time, about alcohol. He said, son, don't ever get hooked on alcohol. And, you know, I was young. I thought, man, he's this crazy old dude, you know. He said, I've been a drunkard all my life. And he said, there's something in that alcohol that just grabs hold of you. and just won't let you go. Y'all, let me tell you something. You can turn that to pornography. There's a steaming, demon spirit in it that'll grab hold of you and won't let you go. You can, you can apply that to pills that'll get a hold of you and just won't let you go. And you may think, well, man, this is innocent. I'm, I'm, I'm young. I, I'm going to sow my wild oats. I'm going to do these things. Let me tell you something. It catches your attention. It controls your affection. And then it consumes you all together. And Jabez understood all of those things. Y'all, I'm, I'm, i got to hurry. i got to finish. Boy's getting, getting wild up here. i got to finish. Jabez understood 
All of these things. And church, let me tell you something. If you will understand these things before you leave the house this morning, you will be a better Christian. You will be a better uh, servant of the Lord. You will be a better servant of the Most High God. Uh, and you will be uh, greater in, the, uh, in your potential uh, to bless the, the kingdom of God. Uh, but if you leave here and you say, John don't know what he's talking about, he, and, and he's wrong, and, and, and he's all these things, y'all... History repeats itself over and over and over. Amen. Amen. It don't take a genius to know uh, that when God says don't do something, don't do it. Because He's not telling you that for His benefit. He's telling it for yours. Amen. Jabez understood that, that sin uh, would, would uh, uh, keep him and separate him from the power uh, of the presence of the one that could bless. He understood those things. And, and the Bible says that's why he called out on God that, that he might keep his hand on him and, and that he would keep him from evil. And, then, and Jabez said that it might not grieve me. Not that it would grieve God. Does your sin grieve God? Yes, it grieves God. But you know what? In the end of the, and at the every end of every day, you know, when you lay your head down and, and you go to sleep at night, it grieves you. You think, man, I wish I could quit this. I wish I could uh, stop this. I wish I could uh, uh, sell out the way that, that, that the Lord wants me to. You can. You just got to call out on Him. I can't deliver you from the sin of drugs, alcohol, pornography. I can't deliver you from the sin of, uh, of looking at, uh, at women with lust. I can't deliver you from any of those things. But let me tell you something. If you call out to Him, He can. Amen. Jabez understood that. In the last part of that verse, the Bible says this, and it's, most, it's beautiful. The God granted him that which He requested. God granted him that which he had requested. You've got to understand who to call on. You've got to understand who can bless. You've got to understand who can enlarge. You've got to understand whose presence you need. And then you need to understand that sin will, will catch your attention, control your affection, and then consume you all together. And then you've got to ask God to keep me from that. And you know what God will do? He will grant your request. Just as He did with Jabez. Church, listen to me this morning. I have no idea what you may be going through in your life. I've got no clue. I do know this, that we're all sinners. And I, and I know that we all have different struggles with sin. We've got different struggles with things in our lives. But this morning, I'm asking you to lay down whatever your struggle is. I'm asking you, if it's your temper, your temper will consume you. If it's your mouth, lay it down. If it's drugs, if it's alcohol, lay it down. If it's looking at women with lust, lay that down. Say, God, grant me. You, in, in your presence in my life, and keep me from this evil. That it won't grieve me. That it won't take me to a place of grief. God will grant that request this morning. Amen. I've got no doubt about that. But see, we just got to understand some things. All we got to do is understand what Jabez understood in 1 Chronicles. This morning, I want to say this. For that person that's here lost and undone without Christ, sin's already starting to consume you. And it won't finish till it's done. Only Christ can step in and pull you out of that. Amen. Only Christ. Brother Eric, if you would, play us a song. Y'all stand to your feet. The altar's already all the big Won't you come this morning?
friends in the house this morning. Amen. Won't you move? Go ahead and play another song, Gary. Don't leave this place the same way you walked in it. You don't have to. Amen. You don't have to. Anybody got anything they need to say or do this morning? Uh, I'd like to say, first got to say, my back is not the kind of stuff we've been. I've heard many times, I'm sure there's been some years of hurt too. It's talking about sin. A sin will take you further than you want to go to keep you longer than you want to stay. Yeah. It costs you more than you want to stay. 
service tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be on the rapture. It's not very often that I tell you what I'm going to preach on, but I'm telling you I'm going to be on the rapture tonight, uh, and so uh, be here for that. If, if uh, end times, anything like that, if, if it don't, uh, uh, if it's not something that you like to study, it ought to be. Amen. Uh, so, so be here tonight at 6 o'clock. We're looking forward to going through this. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I tell you what I'm going to do. The church texting thing, I'm going to leave it up here because it gets mighty crowded back there at that back door. And you can drop by, take a picture of it with your phone, make a copy of it, whatever you want to do. If you want to be involved in, in the, the text messaging thing, I'm going to leave it right there. Meg Jones will be right here by the side of it, and you can talk to her if you need to. Also, don't look at the bulletin next. Okay, and it'll be in the bulletin next Sunday if you don't want to do it today. Okay? Brother John, yes. 69 at 5 o'clock. Uh, Thank you. Start back. You know, out visiting. I know it's kind of old school.